cart. So we're here at a Matai shop, a sweet shop. Now we have a lot of Matai shops back in Canada and they have a variety of sweets from milk cakes, laddus, gulab jamuns, jalebis, but I haven't seen anything like some of these Peshawar style Matais here. For example, this is called Rajar. So it's almost like a sweet milk cake. And what's inside of this one? It's called Kela Matai. Kela Matai. No way, this is made with bananas? No, it isn't made with bananas. No. But it's uh, shaped like that. Uh, I thought it was going to be made with bananas, but it's not. It, it's just shaped like a banana. What is it called again? Swati. Swati. It's a bit of a crunch on the outside and it's soft on the inside. Okay, so this almost tastes like a jalebi and it has a bit of sesame seeds on the outside. You can almost think of it as like a funnel cake, but it's really thick. My Did name Guldin Han. He was his father. Chacha is rather Okay, so all this market is named after. Uh, so all of the shops here, uh, they're all named after his father. So it's a family run business and he's been doing this. Initially, he's been the one making all the sweets for over 30 years and then he got his kids to do the rest of the job. <laughs> sesame seeds, the brown sugar, of course. It reminds me of a soft baked cookie. All right, so the prevalent flavor in a lot of these is that concentrated cane sugar. It's nice and chewy. We're here with Guldin in the car, and he's going to take us to the actual kitchen to see where he makes all of the sweets. So is it still his kids who's in the kitchen right now, or who's in the kitchen? Yes, his son. All right, so we got the family running the business. Let's see what they're making today. His My father. father. My his father. Okay, so his father used to run this shop. Right? My father. Mm -hmm. So the backstory is Guldin uncle's father was born in 1870, and they started off by making the sweets in their homes which gained popularity amongst their neighbors and community and so he decided to open up this shop in 1930. So this is the same sweet that we just had in the shop called Rajar. It's basically all-purpose flour, sugar, clarified butter, and baking soda. Oh, that's satisfying. <laughs> and they're basically making that dough into these small little cubes and then they fry it and then after it's fried they soak it in some more concentrated cane sugar. So they actually make their own concentrated cane sugar here. So they have their own farm of sugar canes and they juice that and then they cook that down and then that's how they make the actual concentrated cane sugar for all of their desserts. Oh, they got some more stuff up here. <laughs> it smells really good in here. It's like a sweet bakery, that's all it is. Yeah. So now we know why he wants to have so many kids. It's because he wants to keep the secret family recipe of all of the sweets in the family. It's a top secret recipe. Uh, who's that? A little bunch of party. So we're going slipper shopping, but they also fed us some chole, which is basically chickpeas, and it's boiled with a whole bunch of spices added on top at the end. It looks like some chili powder and some ground coriander as well. It tastes good, and it immediately reminds me of the beans you get at Taco Bell. I swear, and like I don't mean that as an insult, because I used to eat that a lot too. <laughs> but that's what it immediately tastes like. So this is my last day in Peshawar, Pakistan, and before we head out to the next city, it only feels right to buy some custom-made Peshawar chapels. Goldin Uncle is hanging out with us for the day. He's going to take us to this other rice shop that's really popular. These are rice. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that whole scene reminded me of a NASCAR pit stop, you know, where they have to change the tires. So this guy's bowl was getting empty. They backed up a truck and they brought back some more kitchen, which is basically rice slow cooked with, in this version, it's beef. So the beef is almost melted into the rice. And I'm sure they got a whole lot of different spices in there too. Oh, crap, people are going crazy over this. Was so furious. <laughs> And we're back at Guldin Uncle's shop. So we also have kitchen back home, but we don't usually add beef to it, or the ones I've seen. It smells like the kitchen that my mom makes. That's good. It's like a really hearty, beefy oatmeal. So they use a really short grain rice in this kitchen. It's even better with the yogurt because it's so rich and savory that the slight sourness and tartness from the yogurt really cuts through that, so it's a good balance. It almost reminds me of halim because there's beef in this, but it is still more like kitcheny. It's nice. 